This only goes up to uh, you know, 600 billion. So this is $530 billion of bank failures so far uh, in, in this global financial crisis that, they that we are currently in. Probably the worst financial crisis in all of history. That's how it's going to end up playing out, I believe. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, and global storage options. Learn more about how to invest in precious metals at goldsilver.com. Hi, everyone. The financial crisis is not over with, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, so, Dan, if you can bring up my screen. Now, um, Real Vision uh, has just posted this. Uh, current bank failures have exceeded 2008 adjusted for inflation. I'm going to come back to this chart later because it's very, very important. Uh, this is an older article from March 20th, but the banking crisis might not be over. This was a very uh, lucid uh, article that, that brings up some very good topics and, and a reason to still be wary about the finance global. This is a global financial crisis and it's just starting. Uh, but Credit Suisse's near failure is stoking uncertainty about whether the banking crisis can be contained. Uh, by the way, <laughs> In in the banking crisis, I did I took a look at the timeline, but uh, I think I already covered this in another report. But the uh, CEO of Silicon Valley Bank was also simultaneously uh, a director at the San Francisco Federal Reserve. So within like a week of each other, this guy lost two very highly paid jobs uh, all at once. Uh, for uh, you know his failure to uh, guide Silicon Valley Bank successfully uh, and watch things. Yet he was also on the board of directors of the San Francisco Federal Reserve, uh, <laughs> and it just shows you. When I the more I learn about all of this, the more I know that Janet Yellen, Powell, these guys, these men and women do not know what they're doing. They they lack an understanding of fundamental economics, a timeline of how the banking crisis unfolded. Now, I'm going to take you to my own timeline. This is a um, from a presentation that I did in March, mid-March, right after Silicon Valley Bank. And this shows, or maybe it was just before, uh, I can't remember, but it shows the unrealized gains and losses in, on investment securities in the banking system. So uh, this is the 2008 global financial crisis. So it reached uh, basically minus 79, 75 billion. Uh, and then you see just like a top that's spinning just fine and then it starts to wobble and then the wobbles get bigger. This is the wobbles getting bigger here. And uh, I discovered this about a month or two uh, before the uh, Silicon Valley bank failure. Um, and I presented this in my Wealthion presentation, which was made uh, before the bank, the Silicon Valley bank failure. And I believe then uh, the, it was presented just after the Silicon Valley bank failure came in the middle. But uh, the day after, uh, the, or the Monday after. Silicon Valley Bank was seized on a Friday. The Monday after, there was a report from some economists uh, on the banking sector and the system's market value of assets is $2 trillion lower than suggested by their book value. If you marked them to market, they've, the bank uh, assets have declined by an average of 10% across all banks. And 10% of banks have larger unrecognized losses than those at Silicon Valley Bank, with 10% of banks having lower capitalization than Silicon Valley Bank. And then I went on to show you how the 2008 global financial crisis played out. April uh, of 2007, New Century Financial uh, went bankrupt. Uh, September, bank runs in England. Uh, March, Bear Stearns. July, Indy Mac and Countrywide. September 7th, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were nationalized. Then September 15th, Lehman Brothers failed. Uh, September 16th, AIG gets bailed out. 
September 25th, Washington Mutual. This is the largest bank failure in history, except it's not. Technically, it is. But there was another bank failure that was far, far larger. Uh, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, October, uh, the Fed's TARP uh, commits $700 billion in taxpayer funds. Citigroup bailout in November. December, General Motors and Chrysler get bailed out. January, Bank of America gets bailed out. February, President Obama approves $787 billion in stimulus. And June of 2009, General Motors files for bankruptcy. Now, the important thing here is the speed of how this played out. There was five months, six months, four months, two months between these crises, eight days, one day, 11 days, one month, one month, one month, one month, one month, and four months. So you can see it started off slow and then it all started happening at once. Uh, now uh, I'm going to take you to how it's happening uh, this time around. Uh, March 8th, 2023, Silvergate uh, Capital, they voluntarily closed, but basically they had reached insolvency and decided to unwind. So Silvergate, then Mar two days later, March 10th, Silicon Valley Bank seized by the FDIC. Uh, then two days later, Signature Bank seized by regulators. And uh, one day after that, FDIC creates Bridge Bank and the, pre and the president declares that deposits are safe. And uh, a few days after that, Credit, Credit Suisse is sold to UBS in a shotgun wedding. They would have failed. They were within a day of failing when this happened. And it was all arranged with Swiss government guarantees. That is the reason that this marriage took place and Credit Suisse, which had assets of 1.75 trillion. If they had failed, this was a globally systemic, uh, you know, critical bank that would have taken down the world monetary system. And then May 1st, First Republic is taken over by JP Morgan. But we have two days, two days, three days, seven days, two months uh, is the timeline so far. And I've left all of this, uh, I'll, I'll update you periodically. I've left all of this space on the bottom there uh, to be filled in <laughs> in the future because it will be. Uh, now to get to the bank failures in each year adjusted for inflation. This is that uh, chart that was uh, put up by Real Vision. And um, you see that uh, there's Washington Mutual, the largest bank failure in history. Lehman Brothers was not a bank. That was bigger, much bigger than Washington Mutual. But this is the largest bank failure in history. Uh, and then you've got these 24 other banks. So you have the second largest at the time, and third largest zone, and then the next year, and the next year, and the next year. So when this turns uh, uh, dark here, that's because there's so many happening that are small banks, and they're so close together that it, it's you know there is no blue area in the middle. So this is a lot of banks failing. This is what's happened so far: is the second. Uh, largest bank failure in history, the third largest bank failure in history. And then if this only goes up to, uh, you know, 600 billion. So this is $530 billion of bank failures so far uh, in, in this global financial crisis that, they that we are currently in. Probably the worst financial crisis in all of history. That's how it's going to end up playing out, I believe. You know, I just spent uh, several years studying the financial system and what is wrong with it. And I became so scared in uh, like, you know, September, October. I was just rushing and rushing and rushing to try and get this book out because I absolutely knew that there was a banking cri crisis coming. I knew it was going to come soon. And so I wanted to get this out by October. The book was done uh, at the end of October. It took... Uh, November and December, just to set up to get it printed. There was supply chain disruptions. Uh, we couldn't get paper. We couldn't get cardboard. I ordered way too many of these books because of that. Took uh, all of December and January to open up 
uh, are the actually November, December, January, just to open up the Amazon store and get these things uh, written. And then the book became the best-selling book on precious metals in February. And then uh, Amazon shadow banned us by changing the book from a book to, they listed it as a bit video game. And just today, I finally got it, got them to change it back to a book. I have been battling on this every day for the last two months. And it has, it has delayed the uh, ebook, the Kindle version and other ebook formats, and the uh, audio book. I've spent two weeks in recording studios doing the audio book. And so those are coming, I promise. <laughs> but first, I had to get this turned back into a book instead of a video game because it absolutely crippled my sales. So uh, that is the big story on the current global financial crisis. And it is global uh, because of Credit Suisse. This is global. And uh, this is just the beginning of it. We have yet to see any of these small bank failures. like, And this is where that like if you look at last week's video, you'll, I talk about how the Federal Reserve has uh, aided all of the big banks, the biggest banks in the world, to gobble up all of the small banks and get all of their depositors on their books. And this is what is uh, happening right now. And we have yet to see these periods like uh, in, in 2009 with all these small banks failing and larger banks taking over their depositors. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.